All right, so we finished modeling the cupcakes. So now the only thing left to model is the cupcake box. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, I'll make the box because eventually we want to put, you know, all the cupcakes in a box. So we'll start off by making a tube that is the size of my cupcake. So you can just like, the tube has an input. It's There's a bounding source to it. So if you plug in the cake in there, you'll see that it becomes the size of the cake. And I don't want it that big, but what I can do is I can just, you know, transform it and make it smaller. So we'll just press E, make it, you know, roughly about this height. So the reason I'm doing this is so that uh, I can make the cupcake box you know of that particular size and let's just do a null here and we'll do out let's just call it out proxy so this is done this is fine so now let's just come out here and we'll create a new geometry and I'll call it box or let's call it cupcake box and this is roughly what a cupcake box or a you know a confectionery box usually looks like so we're not going to model this. I'll model something, you know, very, very simple. But what we essentially want to model is something that we can fold. Okay, so that it looks a little authentic. All right, so we'll start off with a grid. Okay, and what I'll do is, uh, let's make it about, uh, let's try seven by six. And we'll give it, so what we want is about, uh, let's try four vertically and two rows each okay so this will come down to about there so so we have one set here and then one set there so this is this is two and this is two and this is two and then i can take uh, an object merge and we can bring in our proxy so that we know how big this is supposed to be okay so we can just take a copy to points and let me just you know I'll just put an add in here so that I can just delete the uh, the geometry. Otherwise it will rotate 90 degrees. So just do delete geometry, but keep points. And you can just plug this in. Yeah, so this gives me the exact size that I want. Okay, but let's make it slightly bigger. So it's slightly spaced out. Yeah, I think this is okay. So we get about uh, six by six by five. Okay, that's the number that we want. Okay, so this is good. We have like, this was just for show. So now I know, you know, how much it is supposed to be. Uh, let's just keep this to a side because we might, you know, need it later on. This is my basic grid. And these are the points that I want for copying. Now, uh, what I also want to do is we want to convert this grid into our box, but we don't want the inside faces. So take a divide. And in the divide, you can like turn off convex polygons and turn off and turn on remove shared edges. So this will remove remove all the edges in the middle, but it will leave the points. So in order to remove the points, you can take a facet. And in the facet, there is an option which says remove inline points. So you'll just have a square left with you or a rectangle. And now the last thing is if I come to the top view, I need to scale this up so it's bigger than, you know, the copied objects. So just take a poly extrude and the poly extrude will give us like a uniform scale going outwards. So I can just take an inset and go negative. Yeah, I think this is good. Yeah. And then turn off output side. So we just have, you know, the basic, otherwise it will generate like a face on the inside as well, which we don't want. So, you know, just that much. Maybe you can go slightly bigger if you want a little more spacing on the side. So I can just go maybe 0 point, minus 0 0.9 should be good. Yeah, I think this is okay. Okay, so this gives us the base that we want. And what we can do is I can just take a null here. We'll call it uh, out cake points. So we can import this later. Okay, so now the rest is fairly simple. We're just gonna do basic extrudes. Okay, so let's start off by pressing three. So we can select an edge. So this is the back edge. 
and I'm going to take a poly extrude and let's extrude it by about uh, let's try 1.5 or uh, slightly more we're not going to make it absolutely accurate so it might it might end up being shorter than the height of the cupcake but I'm doing that on purpose so that the light can come in like if the generally of course the size of the box will be will be taller than the size of the cupcake but in our case, I want it slightly shorter so that when I light it up, you can see inside the box. Otherwise, it will just, you know, block out all the light. So it's not going to be, you know, proper. But uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, so I think this is okay. And let's name these. Okay, so we can call this as back flap. And then uh, select it again. And then we want something that will be, you know, the full size of this so I can just take another poly extrude and again do distance a fair bit so we can keep this to yeah let's do 6.4 so 6.4 so the idea is that we can put a pivot here and then fold this and then this can fold furthermore okay so this is the back and then we can call this as back cover. There's nothing really procedural about this. Okay, just we're going to, you know, just select edges and extrude them. And then take another poly extrude. And, you know, I can, again, so this should be equal to this. So 1.8. So I can do right click, copy parameter, come here, paste relative reference. Yeah. And then we want the sides. So let me just pick up like, We'll just, I'm going to extrude one side and then I'm going to cut this in half and do a mirror. Like that will be easier. So just take another poly extrude and again, I can take this out to, uh, again, I think this should also be 1.5. And I want to give this like a proper fold. So I'll press, so Q will allow you to repeat it. Okay. So let's take this. Uh, this is the front flap. So this is side inner fold and this will be a really small one so we'll just call it side bend okay, so that we get like a little bit of a bend over there and then I'll press you know I'll press Q again and this will again be you know 1.5 and this is let's call it side outer fold okay so this is good Okay, so now we're going to make groups so that we can fold it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with, like I want both of these to fold and then this to fold separately. So first I'll select these two, okay, both the faces and I'll create a group out of it and we'll call it uh, back. Okay, then I'll select just this one, create another group, call it back cover and then I'll select the front one, I'll create a group, call it front flap. Here we'll need three groups, so one which is all three, then these two will bend and then finally this one will bend. Okay, so it's sort of like a progressive thing. So first take all three, create a group, we'll call it side bend. Okay, then we'll take these two, create one more group, call it side bend two okay and then we'll finally pick up the last one group and call it side bend three and let's also do one thing we're going to color these so everything from here to here okay we will press c and i'll make it yellow and then all the groups i can make them let's say red and now we need to start uh, transforming these okay so we can bend them so what I can do is I can firstly take a clip and we can just clip half of it so take take this in the X so 1 and 0 uh, minus 1 and then I'm going to take a null here so I can spec just uh, I'll need this for an expression later okay but ri not right now but we'll just I'll just make it anyways okay so what I got what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press 2, we'll select the point from where it should rotate and then just press transform. 
So what will happen is you'll get a rotation over there. Change this group, like change group type to primitives, change this and we'll pick up back. So it's going to rotate that. Okay, so this is a very easy way to place the pivot where you want to rotate. So when I press E, see I can rotate this now. And then similarly, you can select the next one and press transform. Call this back cover. Yeah. And then we want to do the same for the front. Okay, so what I can do now is see, I can first take this and rotate it completely. So we'll rotate it 90 like that. And then this one, I don't want to rotate it inwards. I want to rotate it back like that. Okay, so here's the problem, right? Like it has to be the smallest piece has to rotate first and then the bigger one. Okay, because the vertex changes location. So what we need to do is we can't rotate this first. So we need to first start from here. Okay, so that was, so you understand like, you know, what problems can occur. So let's take a transform here. Again, change this to primitive. Yeah, okay. So now we can first rotate this and then we rotate the full section. So let's call this back cover rotate and then, then take, you know, this one and again take a transform and this will be primitives, we'll pick up back. Yeah, so the way it works now is first I can take this guy. Uh, let's call this as back flap rotate. So first we rotate the small piece, you know, which should just be about that much or let's go slightly negative like this. And then we take this one and we rotate it 90. Yeah, see, so we can then, you know, now it works the way it's supposed to work. So I can, you know, keep it open like this. And then we start with, you know, with the side. So I can just press two here, select this, do a transform and then pick up. This is side bend three. Okay. Then we press two, we pick this, do transform primitives. This is side bend two. And then we pick this guy and I can do transform and primitives and side bend. So yeah, you can just call them this way. So this is side bend three rotate. This is side bend two rotate. So it's nothing, it's just tedious. Side bend rotate. Okay. And then finally I want the front. So I can just take the front face or firstly just select the point. So we'll pick this one and I'll take a transform and I'll pick up front flap. Yeah, you can just remove it and bring it here. Yeah, so there you go. So now I can start to, you know, just place it. So I can take like, let's take this guy and I'll rotate it, you know, 90 degrees. And then I'll take this one and I'll rotate this so that it folds like that. See, so you get like a nice little fold and then I'll take this one and, you know, fold it completely like that. So you get a nice little, you know, cupcake box. And then I'll take the front and I can just, actually I can just keep it like this. I don't want to bend it. Okay, just to get a little bit of, you know, transformation. And then I can take a mirror. And we have our cupcake box. And then lastly, I can just take a poly extrude after the mirror and give it a little bit of thickness. So just make it 0 0.1. We'll keep it to point normals and do output back. Yeah, there we go. So we have a nice little cupcake box with like, if I look here with these things sort of fitting inwards. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Now as a final thing, let's say if you want to adjust the size of this, but we, but the problem that will happen is when we try to adjust the size of this, the uh, the pivot locations will change. Okay, so what you can do is uh, you can use a point function and you can, you know, make sure that the points match where they're supposed to match. Okay, so we can, instead of, instead of it doing like an X, Y, Z value, like if you come to pivot transform, see this is where it is right now. Okay, so what we need to do in order to ensure that the pivot stays, you know, with the point, is we can extract the actual point value. 
So you can extract individual axis, right? Like X, Y, Z. And the way to do it is using a point function. So what you want to do is you need four things. You need a geometry or a node from where it is, it is getting the data. Then you need the point number from which it's supposed to pick up the information. Uh, then you need what attribute you want to pick up. So in our case, we want to pick up position. And then lastly, uh, which part of that attribute. So if it's a, if it's a vector attribute, then uh, is it X, Y or Z? So in our case, we want Z. So that will be two. So it's zero, one and two. So just to type this in, our point number is 13. So take point and we point it to dot dot slash out because that is before all our transformations happen. Then comma and the point number, which is 13. Then uh, double inverted commas, we want the position. And lastly, we want two, which is the, which is the Z axis and press enter. And what will happen is see, so now this is exactly like it's the same value because that's what's happened. But the good thing now is that even if I adjust the size of my object, nothing will change. Okay, everything will remain the way it is. So I can just take control C and just, you know, start to copy paste this. So I can come in here and this is point number 11. So just start to adjust it. Okay, so control V, this is point 11. Okay. So if you're doing it right, nothing will change. Like everything will remain the way it is. We just need to, you know, adjust it. So this is point seven, but we are getting, we'll need both. Okay, so we'll need X and uh, Z. So we'll put in here, this is, this is fine. This is point seven. And this one, this will be zero because we want X and point number seven. Yeah. And the same thing here. So I can just take this. So now uh, this is at eight, sorry, this is at five. So zero and five. And two and five. And then this last one is okay, that's point number zero. Okay. So this will be zero and this will also be zero. And this will be two and zero. Actually, I'm, you know, I'm starting from the other side, so I'm talking that way. Okay. And then lastly, we have this front flap. So this is the front flap front flap rotate. Okay. And what point is that? This is point 12, only in the Z axis. Okay, so take this. And this is point 12. So if you've done everything right, the advantage of this will be that now if I come in here, and I take this, you know, basic grid, and I try to adjust it. See nothing, you know, nothing breaks. That's the whole idea. Yeah, so that's basically it. this is our cupcake box. And all our cupcakes are fitting in there, we can still adjust it a bit more. Actually, no, don't adjust it here. This is fine. We want to adjust it at the poly extrude. So just take this inset value and you know, make it slightly bigger. Yeah, okay, this is fine. Okay, so starting with the next lesson, uh, we will take all the cakes and the uh, cupcake box into lops and we'll start doing some lighting and rendering.